Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the structure of the mammalian nervous system. This includes the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. It also includes the autonomic nervous system, including the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. So far on this topic we've looked at how nervous impulses are generated and how they're transmitted along neurons. We've also seen how the information is then transferred between neurons via synapses. In this video we're looking at how the nervous system is organised in mammals. Now this may seem tricky as there are multiple levels of organisation, but it's not as tricky as it looks so stick with it. Ok, the first idea you need to understand is that we can divide the mammalian nervous system into two broad systems. These are based on the structure of the nervous system. These two systems are called the central nervous system or CNS and the peripheral nervous system or PNS. Now the central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system consists of the neurons that transmit impulses to and from the central nervous system. For example, sensory neurons transmit impulses from receptors to the central nervous system and motor neurons transmit impulses from the central nervous system to effectors such as muscles. So the sensory neurons and the motor neurons form the peripheral nervous system. Now you need to understand that this organisation is based on the structure of the nervous system. We can also divide the nervous system into two parts based on function. These two parts are called the somatic or voluntary nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. The somatic nervous system involves the functions of your body that are under your conscious or voluntary control. A good example of this is the contraction of skeletal muscles which you carry out consciously. For example, if you turn the page of a textbook then you are consciously triggering muscles in your arm and your hand to contract and this involves the somatic or voluntary nervous system. Now a key feature of the somatic nervous system is that when impulses reach the skeletal muscle the neurotransmitter acetylcholine is released. This takes place at the neuromuscular junction which we we'll look at in later videos. So the somatic nervous system sends impulses to skeletal muscles and this is under conscious control. Now in contrast the autonomic nervous system regulates processes that are unconscious or involuntary and the autonomic nervous system operates all the time. For example, the regulation of your heart rate is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system also triggers the smooth muscles in your digestive system to contract as you digest food. And the secretion of certain hormones such as adrenaline is also under the control of the autonomic nervous system. So in contrast to the somatic nervous system, the autonomic nervous system sends impulses to cardiac muscle, smooth muscle and glands. Now we can further divide the autonomic nervous system into two functional parts. These are called the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system often causes a target organ to increase in activity. A good example of this is the fight or flight response triggered by a stressful event and we we'll look at the fight or flight response in a later video. In this case the sympathetic nervous system triggers the heart rate to increase, increasing the supply of blood to muscles. The breathing rate is triggered to increase and the muscles of the airways relax causing the airways to dilate or open. This increases the supply of oxygen to muscles and the removal of carbon dioxide. Now during fight or flight the sympathetic nervous system triggers peristalsis in the digestive system to slow down. This conserves energy for dealing with the stressful situation. The neurons involved in the sympathetic nervous system release the neurotransmitter noradrenaline when they reach their target organs and as we've seen the sympathetic nervous system generally causes target organs to increase activity. Now in contrast the parasympathetic nervous system generally causes target organs to become less active. For example, when we're resting or asleep, the parasympathetic nervous system triggers the heart rate and the breathing rate to decrease. However, in these situations, the parasympathetic nervous system triggers the digestive system to increase activity. So as you can see, the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems generally have opposite effects on their target organs. 
scientists say that the two systems have antagonistic effects. Now, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous systems involve two different sets of neurons. The neurons involved in the sympathetic nervous system release the neurotransmitter noradrenaline when they reach their target organs. In contrast, in the parasympathetic nervous system, the neurons release the neurotransmitter acetylcholine when they reach their target organs. In the next video, we look at the structure and functions of the human brain.